Occam's razor, or as Einstein put it, God is subtle, but he is not malicious. The simplest theory is truth. The distillation for the first time on planet Earth of a nanoscopic quantity of strangelet at Brookhaven's relativistic heavy ion collider. A strangelet is a substance made of liquid quarks, which is the most powerful explosive in the universe. On the other hand, the Higgs mechanism is so complex that not even Peter Higgs could explain how it gave mass to the universe. To resolve this problem, the science ministry created a monetary prize to reward whomever could explain it best. The winner, a student at London College, came up with the surreal explanation that some particles are celebrities that attract the Higgs field more than other particles. What I've read on the Higgs is, in my mind, very confusing. <laughs> Here's the way I understand it. So this Higgs field affects one particle more so than another particle. We must be able to come up with a more. Well, when we see what they look like, we'll come up with a better analogy, right? <laughs> another analogy, yeah. <laughs> the Higgs mechanism appears in just a few particle interactions. On the other hand, the equivalence principle not only explains the dynamic transformations between vacuum energy and its mass and charge vortices, but it also makes them equivalent to the two ultimate principles of reality space dimensions and time clocks, since the only difference is the way that humans perceive them. The mind freezes the energy of the vacuum into distances in space and its charge and mass vortices into clocks of time that carry the information of the cosmos. The human eye sees roughly a single space-time continuum across the entire universe. Yet, when we observe space-time in great detail, it becomes the sum of infinite energetic quanta, which fill vacuum space and infinite time clocks, one for each cosmic mass and quantum charge. All that is needed to unify every physical entity in the universe with a single principle is to find the relationship between those two physical scales of space-time. Unification. Unification. But this 400-year-old quest for unifying answers about the nature of the universe has now been sacrificed in popular culture to the budgetary needs of the largest machines on the planet. Einstein's defense of thought experiments over mechanical platitudes, as well as his opposition to war and the proliferation of nuclear weapons, contrasts sharply with that of the nuclear industry, which rejects both the pure and practical reasons of science. In one of the great ironies of modern science, CERN, the organization that rejected Higgs paper, has just spent $10 billion building a machine to find the Higgs particle. By heating up this matter, we are going to liberate again these quarks and gluons from their prison, from their proton and neutron prison. In accordance with the new speak of peaceful research and globalization, the two superpowers yielded their leading role in the development of particle accelerators to peaceful Switzerland. This led to the creation of CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, where Western nations poured vast resources into building the biggest machine weapons ever designed on planet Earth. CERN is building the largest, most powerful collider the world has ever known. So powerful that at the moment of particle impact, hitherto unimaginable temperatures will be reached. To get the answers, we've built machines the size of cities to simulate conditions when the universe was created. In reality, those pretentious collisions merely replicate a quark explosion, therefore breaking the scientific method's fundamental proof of truth, experimental evidence. These answers cannot be obtained by provoking huge blasts of quark matter here on Earth, given the obvious risks for the inhabitants of this planet. 
A few scientists have warned mankind of the risks of extinction inherent to those quark explosions, both in scientific magazines and through litigation in American and European courts. Warned that the new energy regimes obtained in Brookhaven's relativistic heavy ion collider could create strangelets. You've read that there are theoretical speculations that at very high, at the next generation of high energy accelerators, uh, one might produce small black holes. And that's true. Otherwise, respectable physicists have suggested that kind of thing. Nature is so inventive and malicious that it's a logical possibility, it's always a logical possibility when you do something that's never been done before that'll lead to a catastrophe. Just to conclude, I've never been so confident, though, of making a prediction as when uh, I was called to sit on a panel about the possibility of an accelerator turning on and, and ending the world. Uh, predicting that it won't is very safe, because if your prediction is wrong... <laughs> <laughs> he went on to win the Nobel Prize for Physics a few years later. And Frank Wilczek. Whether a certain experiment which is being done on our planet is not at variance with the ideology and hope for sustainability. Uh, because science sometimes is dangerous to sustainability. The experiment on little black holes that they are doing is so dangerous. Given these clear and present dangers, Walter Wagner, following his duty as a safety officer, repeatedly sued the industry for potential genocide, asking for an injunction to prevent any further upgrades to those machines. What happened? People for Rick submitted a sworn affidavit from one physicist uh, who simply had conclusionary language saying it was safe without any demonstrated proof, but it was presented by a government attorney and the judge sided with the government attorney and uh, dismissed the case. Ultimately, all lawsuits against those particle accelerators were dismissed on legal technicalities because CERN has the diplomatic immunity reserved for other city-states, like Vatican City, the City of London, and Washington, D.C. This legal city-state status denies courts any right to regulate or even question the activities of these nuclear, religious, financial, and military powerhouses.